Hey there, old guy back again. Hope you're having an awesome day. First and foremost, to a happy and healthy new year. Thanks for joining me again. Um, I finally got my pedal board finished and put together, uh, and I wanted to show you that. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you my pedal board. I'm also going to show you the Temple Audio website, which is a really cool way to plan your purchase and also to plan uh, what your pedal board will look like. And then finally, I'm going to talk about some tips and tricks, uh, some ways to kind of get around the things that I ran into uh, that uh, I probably could have done better uh, or had I kind of known before putting things together would have made my life a little bit easier. Some of the things that I do talk about, I've already written about in my blog or actually was in the last video I did, uh, the um, part four. So I'm going to put a link to those in the description below so you can click on those in case I kind of breeze over something a little too quickly or you want to read a little bit more about it. Uh, so uh, give me a few minutes and let me get my pedal board together and I'll show you that first. So here's the finished pedal board. Um, one thing you can uh, definitely see and one thing that I really was very happy about is how clean everything looks. Um, you can see all of the cables are pretty well hidden. You can't see anything kind of running around uh, all over the pedal board. It doesn't look messy, which is kind of the plan that I had from the beginning. Um, on this side, like I mentioned uh, in the last uh, video, uh, this is uh, for the foot switch. These two are the FX uh, in and out for the FX loop, which I put the carbon copy tremolo chorus and the looper through and then this is going to the front of the amp um, and basically the guitar is connected over here uh, that goes through the wah through the TS9 through the Sur Eclipse and right into the front uh, of the amp uh, so um, it's nice and clean uh, it works really well just to kind of show you I mean I, I turned it on over here and you can see that the that the pedals turn on nice and easy uh, really well kind of thought out uh, as far as the design of the pedal board uh, I can tell you that I'm not personally thrilled with the way that I set this up um, this pedal uh, this foot switch rather is very low profile compared to the rest of this stuff I had initially thought about putting it here and I'm probably going to end up doing that just because the reach over, because of how low profile this is, the reach over on my feet with these higher uh, pedals is kind of uh, a little bit cumbersome and, and I'm not thrilled with it. So I may rearrange this uh, at some point. Um, actually, I'm sure I'm going to rearrange this at some point, mostly because um, I like how the Eclipse sounds so, uh, how the Eclipse sounds so much better than the TS9. I really was able to tweak it to give me that sound I was looking for. So I'm probably going to take the TS9 off the pe off the pedal board, and I really don't like how the chorus sounds. Um, so I'm going to take that off um, and probably get one of the smaller uh, smaller ones, mostly because I don't use chorus that much. Uh, I'm also looking at getting a compressor, which I had initially planned on putting here, but I think I'm just going to rearrange everything to get this to go where I initially uh, wanted it. The wall will stay where it is, but other than that, this is going to be rearranged. I didn't want to wait to do the video to, uh, to do all that because um, it looks really uh, exactly how I wanted it to look. Uh, so I wanted to show you um, a little bit more recently than to wait for other pedals and then rearrange the whole thing and do that. Uh, so I hope you like how it looks. Um, it was really a lot of fun to put together, but I did put I did kind of hit some snags, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. That'll probably make your life a lot easier uh, if you decide to use this pedal board. And one of the things that I like the most about this pedal board is that there's no Velcro, which I hate. Uh, with carpets all over my house, three kids and a dog, the Velcro would have gotten completely uh, torn apart and full of hair and carpet fibers and all kinds of stuff. Uh, so anyway, uh, give me a minute and the next thing I'm going to do is show you uh, their website and how to actually plan a pedal board on their website before you even decide whether you want to purchase the products or not. I wanted to show you this really cool feature on the Temple Audio website. Uh, so basically go to templeaudio.com and if you scroll down a little bit, this is their homepage. 
when you scroll down to planner, it'll pop you into a, uh, a, a planner for your pedal board. And you can uh, pick which pedal board you want to uh, look at. Um, I chose the Duo 24, and what that basically means is that you can put two rows of pedals. Uh, the, the solo is one row of pedals, the Duo is two rolls, the Trio. Uh, the Trio is three rolls, the uh, three rows rather, not rolls, sorry. And then it has a feature here where you just you click Add Pedal, and here's a huge list of the manufacturers of all your pedals. Uh, not every manufacturer, but the, for the most part, uh, most of them. So, you know, I started with Dunlop uh, and you see it says you, you click on Dunlop and it pulls up a list and then you press that and there you go. It pops up with the pedal that, that you want to look at and, and align. Uh, you know, for Boss, they have, the, they have a huge uh, list of just about every pedal Boss makes. So I had the um, CH1 Super Chorus so you pop that in there, and then it pops in, and then I also had the TR2, rather, TR2, so that too. And you can put them anywhere you want on this, uh, and you can rotate them any way you want, just like that. So it's a really cool way to plan your pedal board and see if this is the type of pedal board that uh, would suit your needs. Now again, it doesn't have all the um, all the potential pedals like it doesn't have the black star foot switch which is the one that kind of gave me a little bit of trouble uh, but it has MXR so you see here and you know huge just a huge list of all the pedals MXR has and I had the carbon copy delay so you can I put that there um, uh, and the sir of course so I just wanted to kind of show you that this is kind of a neat and even uh, I kind of had fun with it when I was planning all this um, and there's Sir, so the Eclipse is here and that, um, you know, and again, one of the things to be mindful of when you're planning this is where all the input pedals, uh, input jacks are on the pedal and also where the, um, uh, the power jack is. For example, the Eclipse, the in and outer on top and the 9 volt is on top, whereas the MXR, the in and outer on the sides and actually the power a plug is on the side, whereas the boss, the power plug is on top, even though it's it's on either side. So it's just a, a really neat thing to be able to do uh, planning wise. Uh, I did notice too that they do have Voodoo Lab here. Um, for some reason, the the adding the power pedal power two plus doesn't really work, but the four by four does. So you know if you have that and you want to try to use it on a board like this, you can. Uh, plan on where you want to put it, um, you know, before you really uh, align all your pedals. And I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. In any case, really cool, uh, really cool feature on their website, uh, you know, templeplanner.com, or just go to the Temple Boards, uh, or Temple Audio website right off the bat uh, and scroll down to Planner. Uh, so just wanted to show you that, uh, and I'll be back to talk about the rest. All right, let's talk about the tips and tricks that I learned while putting together my Temple Audio pedal board. I got the Duo 24, uh, and the first thing definitely to do is test the modular components that you buy. Uh, the, uh, the power outlet, make sure that it turns on and off with the on and off switch, and that it's sending power and electricity through it. Uh, the four-way uh, plugs that uh, you can put on the side, make sure they, uh, they, there's a signal going through them by plugging them all in and testing them out. Definitely want to do that. Before you start putting any of these components on the panels, make sure you have a really good steel tip screwdriver. The one that they give with the power outlet is very soft and very flexible. Those screws are really small, easily stripped, and a good steel tip screwdriver will prevent all that. Like I mentioned in a previous uh, uh, video, uh, when it's time to put the, uh, the, little, uh, uh, the power plug onto the panel, you have to take the panel off. There's no way to do it properly without the panel off just because of space. And then before you put the four-way plug on, you've got to put the panel back on so you can access all the screws to put the panel back on the, 
uh, on the pedal board uh, before screwing in the four-way. If you try to put the four-way on first and then put the panel back on, uh, there's one screw that you will not be able to uh, reach uh, to put the panel back on the pedal board. So it's real important that you do that. Uh, when it's time to attach the plates to the pedals, first thing you want to do is clean your pedal uh, with some rubbing alcohol. Just get all the gunk off of it. Uh, before trying to stick it on here. Uh, this is a medium size uh, plate. There's three sizes, small, medium, and large. Uh, the small is for like the mini pedals. A medium plate is uh, for like a Boss or an MXR type single pedal. And the larger uh, plate is for um, like the, uh, the Ditto X2 uh, looper that I have or the Sur Eclipse or a larger pedal like that. Uh, once you're ready to use the plate, I really recommend taking the thumb screw off, putting the plate on the board, checking, uh, the, put the pedal uh, on the plate without taking the uh, sticky off, just to make sure it's uh, where you want the pedal as far as getting the, uh, the cables through the appropriate holes. Uh, and then once you're happy with the position, with, this, with the plate still on the pedal board, peel this off and then stick the, the um, pedal on there. If you do it where you're using, where you're putting this on the pedal off the board, you may not get the alignment you want um, and uh, it, it can get a little bit sticky when you're trying to get your cables uh, to, to go where you want them to go. Uh, it, this is especially important if you've got something like the, the Black Star foot switch I showed you, uh, which is long and it's kind of across most of the pedal board. If you try to put this on off the, off the board, there's no way you're going to get the alignment right because not only does it have this thumb screw uh, which sits, uh, which helps the, the plate to sit on the board, but there's also four little nubs that sit on the board so that this doesn't rotate and there's just no way you're going to get the placement right. Uh, another thing is the power supply. Uh, I, put, I picked the Voodoo Lab Pedal Power uh, Plus 2 uh, mostly because um, uh, Temple Audio uh, made a bracket so that uh, you can just use this bracket and then the thumb screws actually point down whereas if you use a plate to put another power supply on there the thumb screws will stick up through the uh, through the pedal board, and that'll take up quite a bit of real estate. So, um, also the the, the first uh, the first power supply I bought was the True uh, the uh, True Tone CS7, I think it was. And that thing was huge; it really wouldn't fit. Uh, there was really no clearance under the board; it would have hit the ground uh, if I would have tried to put it anywhere. So I got the Voodoo one, and, and there are no issues with that whatsoever. Um, another thing about putting pedals on the board itself. Uh, the Wawa pedal I have, the Dunlop Crybaby, actually uh, I could attach it to the pedal board without plates. I basically unscrewed the little rubber feet, took the rubber off, and then used the screws for the rubber feet to attach it to the plate. And actually Temple Audio recommended that I do that off the bat. So no plates for that. So if you have another pedal that has that with those little rubber feet that are attached to the bottom plate with screws, you can try to do that without the, uh, without the, um, uh, the plates. Um, you know, uh, just to go back to this for a second, uh, one of the disadvantages of the plates is that if you need to take it off the pedal, uh, Temple Audio recommends using kind of like a box cutter, uh, and then you can't use the sticky anymore, uh, so you have to get more sticky, uh, double-sided sticky foam tape from Temple Audio or Home Depot or wherever. So that is one of the disadvantages. Um, the last thing I kind of ran into was, uh, of course, when I, atta when I atta attached the um, plate to the pedal board. I then used the thumb screw and then tried to wire everything up and you, you just can't do that mostly because you may have to lift up the pedal a little bit uh, to get um, you know your uh, patch cables and your uh, power wires uh, into the pedal itself so uh, you know do your mock-up but don't attach the thumb screw so you can just you know take them off stick all these uh, different types of cables on there and then you're done. One thing I kind of ran into that was kind of funny uh, but was a little hair raising at the time was um, uh, some of the pedals actually you had to pick a side uh, and if you pick the wrong side and it wiggled a little in the pedal you, you couldn't power up the pedal and so I was kind of freaking out uh, a couple of times till somebody online on the Telecaster forum actually helped me with that. Um, you know that's that's pretty much all the tips and tricks that I have certainly if you have more I'd love to hear uh, about that in the comments below uh, if you like the video, please go ahead and thumbs up like. Uh, if you like what the channel has to offer, please go ahead and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. Um, I'll see you again soon and to a great 2019.